Guys, today we got the brand new Travis Scott Jordan 1 that has people confused. Jordan Brand just revealed their entire spring lineup, and Nike's lawsuit with a YouTuber has an update. Welcome to Sneaky Sundays. Let's hop into a release recap before we jump into the upcoming stuff. And let's kick this off with the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 990 V4 1998 pack. How long is this name? Three colorways. I believe there was actually two drops, Joe Fresh Goods website, and then a bunch of other raffles. I got the intro pair, and they are amazing. Let me know if you got one. Travis Scott Mac Attack. Cactus Mac, whatever you want to call these things, they released, and uh, as expected, they were super limited, but I don't know how many people were that desperate for this pair of shoes anyway. Let's get into this upcoming stuff, and let's kick it off with the release that's happening tomorrow on Christmas Day, because you know what, sneakerheads, it doesn't matter what day it is, there's, there's a pair of shoes that we always gotta buy, and that is Fear of God and Adidas's latest pair of sneakers, a basketball one silhouette, $250, this triple white colorway is gonna be dropping tomorrow. I believe this is gonna be a Another Fear of God website exclusive. Nevertheless, it's definitely not a bad colorway. I probably just prefer the black and white pair. We've got the Ronnie Feig New Clarks Adidas Samba. We've got two different colorways. Again, they're dropping for Kithmas. Now, these things are going to fly and probably resell for a ton of money. As you guys know, the Samba and especially this version of the Samba has been absolutely one of the most hyped sneakers. I really don't mind this pair right here with like the black and the white and the gray. These are going to be dropping exclusively through Kith again on Christmas Day. Another release that's right around the corner that I just want to remind you guys of is the Nike Kobe 4 Pro Tro Black Mamba. These are going to be dropping December 27th. There's an entire collection that goes along with this. You've got like a t-shirt, a jersey, uh, and then this varsity jacket, which uh, fun fact, I mean, just I want you guys to guess down in the comment section how much this costs. Did you guess? Well, we'll double that because it's $824. Either way, just wanted to remind you of this drop. It's definitely one of the most anticipated sneakers that's dropping this year. Sticking with Kobe's, we already know what's going to be the Christmas Kobe release for next year. And that is this pair of sneakers right here. The Nike Kobe 9 Elite Christmas is going to be returning next holiday season in 2024. I don't know about you guys, but the Kobe 9 Elite has a special place in my heart. I just remember looking at this pair of shoes when I was a kid. Not specifically this colorway, I think it was the black and white one. And I wanted it so bad, but they were so expensive. It's supposed to come back, I assume, as close to the original as possible. I doubt they'll make any changes to it. Last Kobe I wanted to show you guys is the Girl Dad Kobe 4 or the Bicoastal colorway. We spoke about these last week but we just got some updated on foot shots for you guys to take a look at and uh, yeah this is the all over suede or nubuck pair. A little on foot shot over here. Man these are clean images. Look at the sun coming through behind the legs. So yeah the updated release date is going to be summer 2024 and they're going to cost $180. This one's pretty interesting. So the Jordan 1 Low Retro OG Year of the Dragon is going to be dropped as we know in January on the 24th. Again, we spoke about these in the past. You could take a look at them here. They've got the scales to match with the dragon theme. Uh, very nice colorway, a good looking pair of shoes. We just got some detailed shots of the GS version, which is actually completely different. I don't know why, but they've decided to pretty much create a whole different pair of Jordan 1. So this pair has some kind of like metallic silverish gold type of color for all of the overlay panels. Still got the white base leather and still kind of sticks with the same color theme of like like the maroon or red color for the tongue tag and the back of the heel. And then you've got the green scales for the Nike swoosh as well. He's going to be dropping alongside the men's pair in January on the 24th, at least according to House of Heat. All right, it is time to get into this uh, Jordan brand spring lineup for next year that they just released. They did a whole uh, Nike sneakers app live stream. So let's kick it off with the Air Jordan 1 High 85 metallic burgundy. One thing you will notice with this lineup is there's a lot of predominantly white sneakers, just like this one. The Jordan 1 High Ivory. This one kind of looks like a craft variation. It's just covered in suede. Uh, it actually doesn't look bad, at least in terms of the colors. It looks very, very cool. But when I first saw a glimpse of this, I kind of assumed it was like a Zoom Comfort version. So we got the Jordan 1 High Black and White, a pretty straightforward pair of shoes. We got the Jordan 1 High Yellow Ochre, definitely looking pretty solid. But uh, again, we've got, we've had a lot of recent yellow Jordans, like the Pollens, and then we got the Taxis. I don't know if we really need these right now, but who knows? Maybe somebody really prefers this colorway. I mean, it is in the Chicago color blocking, so yeah, there's definitely room for that. We've got the Air Jordan 1 High Woman's Metallic Gold. Like I said, we've got another freaking metallic pair, and it's predominantly white. Jordan 1 Low 85 Metallic Navy, same thing going on here. Air Jordan 2 Woman's Sail Black. That's just a black and white pair of twos. Python 2's looking pretty crazy with that python skin around the side, but they're also looking very, very similar to the woman's version. 
another pair of twos, this time a low in the black varsity red. Damn, another pair of twos. Jordan Brand, what you doing to your outlets? They're about to be overstocked. Air Jordan 3 Midnight Navy, didn't these just drop? Air Jordan 3 Ivory, this is a pair that I'm definitely looking forward to. I'm definitely gonna try and uh, put my name in the hat for these things. This is one of the favorites that I've seen for next year. Of course, the big ones, the Air Jordan 4 Bread reimagines, the ones that uh, people are itching to get their hands on or red. This is definitely gonna be a banger of a release straight out the gate for next year. Uh, I believe these are dropping February at some point, but again, we'll have plenty of times to go over updated release dates. We got the Air Jordan 4 Women's Sale Metallic Gold. This is actually what they look like. So we were kind of, there was tons of different speculative images. We got the Jordan 5 Olive, the return of the olives next year. I don't know if I'm tripping today or something, but I swear we had a release of these. Air Jordan 5 Women's Lucky Green. That's looking pretty nice, actually. I like the contrast with the black and the green. We got the yellow ochre sixes looking pretty dope. The powder blue nines, that's a pretty big release. A lot of people happy that those things are coming back. Air Jordan 13 blue gray, meh. Air Jordan 14 flint gray looking pretty nice. Look at that suede on the toe box. Air Jordan 14 low woman's love letter. Yeah, that is all of the releases so far that are going to be happening this spring. So right around the corner, this is what you guys have to look forward to for the new year. I think it's okay. It's a, a little bit same, same. Like there's a lot of similar sneakers in here that potentially we don't need. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think about Jordan Brand spring lineup down in the comments. Finally got some official images of Drake's upcoming Zoom Drive sneaker. We've got, uh, again, two colorways that are going to be dropping. I believe we only have the official images for the black pair, but we also got this triple white one. Now, both of these should be dropping springtime 2024. Honestly, it's a little bit of a meh sneaker for me. Maybe it's gonna change my mind when I see them in hand. You get a bunch of reflective details on here, which is actually pretty dope. And yeah, I mean, it's not a bad pair of shoes, but it is very Nocta, it's very Drake. We finally got the very best looks at the upcoming Air Jordan 4 Military Blue. My man's got them on foot. We've been taking a look at potato images for too long now. So yes, these things are looking pretty much perfect. He's got them on with the SB4s because they've, they're going with that shape now. All of the details are exactly the same as the 1989 original pair. Man, I'm so hyped for these things. I am ready. So just to remind you, these are the pictures that we were looking at before. Like I said, I mean, the freaking like suede on these things looks sale instead of grace. They're going to be dropping May the 11th, 2024. Sticking with fours, we've got a brand new mock-up, a more accurate mock-up of the upcoming Air Jordan 4 V. Vivid Sulfur. So this is apparently what they are going to look like. Now there may be some slight differences cross our fingers that they do actually look like this. I take these over the yellow ochre ones. I honestly think so. We also got an updated release date, which is going to be April the 20th. Let's just stick with yellow. Why not? And I thought this was very interesting. We've got a brand new dunk, but it's got a thick cut of leather and canvas material. Maybe Nike heard all of the complaints about how terrible the leather quality was on their regular dunk. So they were like, you know what? Let's step it up a notch and just slap some of the thickest stuff we got. Not entirely sure how I feel about the canvas though. It looks very rustic. If you were thinking about a release date, we don't have that just yet. I'd be very interested to see if you guys would like this approach from Nike next year. It's thicker cut leather, maybe not the canvas, but just better and thicker leather. Like I said, we got a brand new pair of Travis Scott's and <laughs> this one is pretty left field. I'm not gonna lie. Take a look at these things right over here, guys. The freaking, the yellows. What's up with next year and yellow sneakers? I don't know. Is it going to be just like a massive year for yellow shoes? But it's kind of random for Travis Scott. First of all, why are you still dropping Jordan 1s, bruh? Like, they, I'm sure that they were supposed to be done with 1s ages ago. And then why are you throwing this yellow on it? Is that really your color theme? Now, the, the details don't really stop there. The color code for this pair of shoes does say Canary Racer Blue, Light Silver Gum Medium Brown. So... Some other people have uh, kind of speculated that it's going to look like this, which if this is what drops and the silver instead of white with the blue Nike swoosh, I'm sorry, but this is just a little bit crazy. There is this one image potentially of what the pair of shoes is actually like in hand. And I think that's what they're basing this off of. Now it doesn't, you can't really see what color the Nike swoosh is with this image. I don't want to judge it too quickly, but this is the first looks that we have of yet another Jordan 1 low 
from Travis Scott that's going to be dropping next year. Again, don't forget that we are also going to be getting this pair right over here. This is the Black Olive Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott. This is actually going to be in men's sizing. It looks very, very similar to the original like dark mocha pair that we had, like the first Jordan 1 Travis Scott. I will also mention, I forgot to say, but this canary yellow pair of Jordan 1s is going to be in women's sizing. However, I don't think that really matters because they did extended sizing for the olive, so it's probably just going to be the same as that. Like imagine if they didn't make extended sizing for these, so it's like Travis Scott makes a shoe that Travis Scott cannot wear because he can't fit into them. Moving into the future with this next one, I'm actually really looking forward to what Adidas comes up with after looking at this pair of shoes. This is the Adidas Y3K Wonder Runner Pro, and it's definitely got my interest. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this colorway, but the design is actually pretty different. It's pretty, you know, I, I just like Adidas for the fact that they usually try pretty outlandish stuff. This tunnel of a midsole, which looks pretty interesting. It kind of makes the shoe look way bigger than it actually is. Apparently, this pair of shoes is going to be very, very comfortable. Like, the cushioning is going to be mad on these. Interestingly, the core of the design is derived from Akira, the iconic anime from the 1980s that explored the relationship between machines and human beings. Release date on these things is going to be next year. We're not entirely sure exactly when. Slay Benbury teased two brand new colorways of the New Balance 1906 are Heat Be Hot, apparently, is what the collection is going to be called. Now, we've kind of seen little glimpses of these things, like he's been teasing, I don't know, random shots of like the toe box and stuff like that. Extremely loud. These things can be heard a mile away. As of right now, again, don't have too many images, but uh, these should be dropping at some point next year. No specific release date. Jordan Brand just brought back one of their OGs to become the chief design officer. So Jason Maiden, if you didn't know, worked with uh, Jordan Brand back in 2001, and then he kind of left in 2014. Most recently, he was working for Fear of God Athletics, actually as the president. So now he's back at Jordan Brand, and he is going to be the chief design officer, cooking up some brand new silhouettes for the new year. We've got our first looks at the upcoming Air Jordan 1 High Team Red. Fairly straightforward. I can't imagine that these things are going to be anything incredibly popular. They're going to be dropping May the 25th next year. Hopefully the leather is good. Doesn't look the best from these shots. It looks kind of basic. Not a bad colorway nice color blocking at least let me know what you think of these got a brand new upcoming supreme and nike collaboration we got another pair of forces this right here is the speed red colorway and they actually did something other than just slap the logo on the back i believe this is just a mock-up image i don't know if it's actually the pair of air forces that we're going to be getting these are going to be dropping next year in the summertime 2024 and they're going to retail for 123 dollars now i imagine there's going to be a couple different colorways usually supreme does like a couple couple different colorways on whatever sneaker they're working on with Nike. Oh, we got some brand new Balenciagas. I mean, uh, Adidas, sorry, Adidas shoes. This is the Adidas Vento XLG. So uh, we got a couple different colorways. Maybe this black and white and red one is not too bad but uh, the other ones just look a little bit childish, like this one especially. Too many colors, things going on on an already, you know, pretty crazy pair of shoes. Okay, so apparently they've already dropped on the 22nd. Uh, however, they're gonna be dropping globally next year. So I don't know where overseas is. Massive talking point this week has been uh, the store that made customers crush their Powerpuff Girl Nike Dunk boxes. And this stuff happens all the freaking time. Some random shoes, store that does a raffle, you know, decides to tear up the boxes. I believe they did it with the Kobe release as well. Uh, this one's a little bit different because I think they asked the customers who won the raffles to like destroy it themselves. This has always been kind of like the same topic over and over again. It's like, is this a good thing? Obviously, it's to deter, you know, sneaker resellers. You damage some of the value of the shoe when you destroy the box. But then at the same time, other people are like, you know what? I'm a sneakerhead. I never planned on reselling these things, but I like to keep my boxes. I keep all of my sneaker boxes. It comes in clutch when I move house. Like, I needed these sneaker boxes. If not, I'm literally throwing them all into, like, a huge bag. And then they start, like, you know, rubbing up on against each other and getting each other dirty. Either way, I'd be very interested to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comment section. What do you think? Do you think that uh, these sneaker stores destroying the boxes is a good thing and it will deter resellers? 
or do you think the resellers will just sell the shoes anyway without the box? Right, we've got a little update from uh, the whole Nike suing the YouTuber thing. So if you guys didn't know, Nike is suing YouTuber Cedaz or Eben Fox for uh, basically fake sneakers. I mean, it's a whole big story. There's a lot more detail and I made a full video on it. So if you want to check that out, I'm not going to go through all the details today. Uh, I'll just link it over here or down in the description. Definitely worth a watch. It's super interesting. Either way, if you guys did see that video, we got a little update post from Sneaker Legal, who is a lawyer. He basically said, it looks like Cedas or Eben Fox hired an attorney and is working with Nike to settle already. Joe Southron, who is, uh, I assume, the attorney, said, made a statement. He said, we disagree with the allegations made, but we are planning to cooperate with Nike to resolve their concerns. I don't know how you disagree with something like this because because everything is online, like everything. The way he does bullet point a couple things which I thought were very interesting. So what does a quick settlement likely mean for CDAS? Less legal expenses, taking a trademark infringement case to trial could easily be one million plus dollars in attorney fees alone. Nike will get some information. This depends on uh, the case and the attorney, but Nike will certainly ask for information about these reps, UAs, and the source of them, manufacturers. Yeah, he goes on a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. They're looking to settle. Uh, it's crazy because after I made this video, Cedaz actually DM'd me on Instagram and he seems like such a nice guy. Whether you disagree with the whole like fakes and stuff like that, it's still like, it's pretty rough. I wouldn't wish a freaking lawsuit on my worst enemy. This is rough and especially because it's Nike, you know they are out for blood. Yeah, it's a pretty savage situation, but again, I did tell you guys that I will keep you guys updated. I'm sure we're gonna get some more news. Final story for today, a lot of you guys in the comment section wanted me to include include the auction results from last week. So we spoke about some of the sneakers that were being auctioned off and we got the results, man. So we know their final sale price. Let's kick it off with the Jordan 4 Eminem signed encores from 2005. These things sold for a whopping $50,000. So the estimated range was anywhere between 40 and 60,000. So it's kind of right in the middle of that. Now the other pair of shoes was the Nike Air Jordan 3 Spike Lee Oscars, the all over gold pair with the Tinker Hatfield signed box and design. This is a size 12 and a half. These also sold for a whopping $50,800. I don't know how it's exactly the same, but the estimated range on this pair of shoes was only 15 to 20K. This like went way above what people were expecting. So that's pretty crazy. Got one more pair of shoes that sold. And of course that is the Travis Scott stage worn Rolling Loud Festival Air Jordan 1s. This is the olive colorway. This is actually the French and family version so you can see it's like the utopia pair these things sold for almost 10k either way guys have an amazing christmas let me know if you're watching this on christmas day by the way just spam it down in the comment section hey if you got some time on your hands you're chilling you know you sat back on the couch well why don't you check out another video just click over there